By now, you've uh, become familiar with these uh, guys, I'm sure. But in case you aren't, these are the protesters who disrupted the AOC town hall and have since uh, gone viral. Uh, we are talking, of course, uh, to Jose Vega and Kynan Thistlethwaite. So, guys, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Thank you for having you. me on. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great to talk to you. you guys are some of the most famous guys we've ever spoken to now. <laughs> Believe it or not. Maybe, maybe you guys like, are like maybe the biggest celebs ago. we've ever had. We just had Aaron Mate on a couple of days ago. We thought that was a big catch. It's like now we got two real viral superstars. So it's great to meet you guys. Uh, it doesn't last forever, you know. I, 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 I keep telling Kynan, you know, it's like every time I think our 15 minutes are up, AOC just does something to, to, to bring it back to life, you know, which I think we'll talk about later when she responds and her response to it. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, everybody has seen this clip so far, but I'm just going to play a little bit of your initial action uh, and then we will take it from there. This woman, none of this matters unless there's a nuclear war, which you voted to send arms and weapons to Ukraine. Tulsi Gabbard, she's left the Democratic Party because there are a bunch of war hawks, okay? You originally voted, you ran as an outsider, yet you've been voting to start this war in Ukraine. You're voting to start a thermonuclear war with Russia and China. Why are you playing with the lives of American citizens? You're playing with our lives. There will be no neighbors if there's a nuclear bomb. You voted to mobilize and send money to Ukrainian Nazis. You're a coward. You're a progressive socialist. Where are you against the war mobilization? He's telling the right truth. You have done nothing. Tulsi Gabbard has shown guts where you've shown cowardice. I believed in you, and you became the very thing you sought to fight against. All right. So like I said, people can see the whole video just about everywhere. Most of the people watching this have already seen it. AOC was asked about this and she gave the following response. Somebody asked her on her Instagram chat, I suppose, could you speak on being confronted by anti-war protesters? She says, sure. They were actually not anti-war protesters. They were right-wing Trumpers, and some were LaRouche cult members, not progressives as they claimed. Their own social media history shows this. It was a stunt that they do from time to time. Last time they showed up to a town hall yelling about eating babies or something. It's a thing they do to go viral and draw in people. This time, uh, they were parroting pro-Putin talking points. It is not anti-war to support Russia's imperialist project to invade and seize neighboring countries either. Ukraine, like other nations, has the right to self-determination. The only person instigating threats of nuclear weapons is Putin, no one else. As far as their comments about Tulsi Gabbard, Gabbard has voted for more defense budget increases than I ever have. Zero. Look it up. Happy to dig more into Ukraine and other posts. A lot of these right-wing video and social media stunts are predicated on people not knowing the context and just believing whatever the person is saying for face value. For example, in the video, they cut out the part where they waited to yell until a deaf constituent was trying to ask a question so it would look like everyone was mad at their words instead of the fact that they were harming a person with a disability. All right, before we ask you anything, I just want to give both of you guys the floor to respond to that. Yeah, I mean, on the on the cult accusation, all I'll say is this. I mean, if a dude in a neon robe and a giant afro descended from the heaven and said, listen, I got a plan to stop nuclear war, I would listen to him. I don't know what he's got to say, but I would listen to him first just to see what he's got to say. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's that on that. And on being right-wing Trumpers, pro-Putin talking points, the only person inciting nuclear war is Putin. I would refer her to Adam Kinzinger's uh, comments earlier in the year saying we shouldn't rule out first strike nuclear policy in the case that there is a biochemical weapon attack from Russia. Guy, you could you could go off from here, but that's that's my 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 response. Yeah, you notice I love how you know when you actually confront these people, they resort to smearing you rather than addressing what you actually said. Notice that she didn't say anything about her voting to fund this war in Ukraine and bringing us on the brink of thermonuclear war. 
she's not addressing those questions. And, you know, on the last part, um, we were harming someone, a deaf person in the audience. It was actually an emailed question from a constituent who may or may not have been deaf. And she only announced that after um, we had intervened on her. So, yeah, you see how these people, you know, redirect the question. Yeah, right. She, uh, the, the, yeah, the deaf constituent thing, I just want to be real clear on that because, like, uh, The Hill had made this very clear, too. I think Brianna Joy Gray talked about it, but I do just want to make it clear. There wasn't a deaf constituent We did like that we didn't just steal the mic from or something, or we didn't speak over a deaf constituent, which, by the way, like, it's, 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 it's dark humor, but how would the deaf constituent know I started yelling or kind of started yelling? They would just keep <laughs> talking, I guess, until someone flagged them down. But no, they weren't there. It was it was an email, which I believe was pre-written before the town hall even started. And you and I keep pointing people to the live video that AOC herself did. She says, OK, we're now going to read an email that came in. And the question is, how do we make politics more accessible for people with disabilities? So. Uh, OK, so she she just straight out lied about yeah. there being a deaf constituent in the room. There's no way to really interpret that as an honest mistake, right? Yeah. You can't mistake that there was a deaf person being shouted over. Um, so that, that to me, that's just such a disgusting misuse of uh, concern for the disabled. Uh, to, yeah. to, to to direct that as a as a weapon against you that's really that's really remarkable that you would do something like that that you well, would say something like that we're ableist apparently you're ableist that <laughs> yeah. you're ableist she she just weaponized that against you now um i did campaign for aoc back in the day oh no no i no i did i did back in uh back in 2018 yeah so very there's very uh I, I can't. There yeah, he is. Right there. So I really wish she had turned out to be what we thought she was at the time. Sure. Uh, she she went, she cried at the border with the children, and then she voted to fund ICE. So what is she talking about? She's funding these wars in Ukraine. She really didn't take on your points. Now, that having been said, you guys have been dragged so much in the media and by AOC. I want to ask you. Do you feel in retrospect that you should have just left Tulsi out of it? Because even when we did a video about this, oh, my God, all the Tulsi. It, we literally did a video talking about how Tulsi was beside the point, And we kept getting feedback about how bad Tulsi was. So do you feel yeah. in retrospect that was strategically a mistake? Mm, Kynan, Kynan's good on this, actually. Yeah, I no, I don't regret what we said about Tulsi because it wasn't, like you said, it wasn't the main point of our remarks. I mean, the only reason we actually brought her up is because she did make the very courageous decision of actually leaving the Democratic Party, as she said, among other reasons, but because they're a party filled with war hawks. They're bringing us to the brink of thermonuclear war. And it's not like you have to agree with everything Tulsi says to agree with her on that point, you know? And she's probably one of the most prominent people actually bringing that issue to the forefront. And I think if we're actually going to build an anti-war co coalition, because, I mean, let's face it, this is the most dangerous point that we've ever had in humanity, then we have to learn to get along with these kinds of people, I think. So... And I was surprised, too. I was surprised how many anti-Tulsi people I had responding to me in the comments. It it really took me by surprise, but it's not the main point of it. So, you know, don't be childish about it. Realize what she said, you know, and let's do something. Yeah, I think pe yeah, people were, like, linking me things about her after the fact of what I did. I'm like, I, I don't know anything about that. I know what she just did. She just right. left the Democratic Party. She just did a whole thing on Joe Rogan talking about how close we are to nuclear war. You know, I, at this point, I don't care what she's voted on before. It doesn't matter what you believe right now. The honest, objective truth is that we are very close to nuclear war, closer than we were during the Cuban Missile Crisis. During the Cuban Missile Crisis. So, frankly, I don't care who the fuck. I, I, if Mike Pompeo, the worst person in the world, came out right now and said, you know what, I'm against nuclear war, I'd stand with him. And I hate the guy. Like, I abhor him so much. Or same thing with John Bolton, right? See, that's what matters. I want to hate this guy. I want to be around to hate this guy. Let me put it that way, right? I want to be around 
to shout at AOC. Okay, I'm not trying to do that through a nuclear wasteland. I mean, uh, Henry Kissinger, one of the actual worst people in the world, <laughs> talks some sense on this issue. Right. What are you going to do? Throw that out? You know, and, and that was the point that I kept making is that they're, they're look, one of the videos that we made that blew up our channel to the extent that our channel has blown up. We're not as big as you guys yet, obviously. <laughs> but We're not but, big. We're no, not I know. Big. I'm I'm joking. I'm messing with you. And by the way, you guys don't don't have to mute your microphones between the talks either. You can keep them on the whole okay, time. Fine. Yeah, there you go. Um but uh, they, they don't want to hear it. The, the wants to hear the Larouche cult chanting in the background. <laughs> <laughs> it's the One of the videos no, that. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we have a little human sacrifice. Now. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want you I, hang on. So for the record, you do not eat babies because she was saying something about you eating no, babies. No, the, oh, right. What, what, what is this? Is, is, is that no? Because I don't know if you remember this. Two years ago at uh -huh. a town hall. Uh -huh. AOC was confronted by a protest, uh, I don't know, uh, somebody who said, listen, you know, climate change is an issue. I feel very strongly about this. I'm afraid. I think we need to eat babies as a way to curb climate change. I do remember. Oh, my God. Now that you say this, it rings a bell. That was us. That was you? That was well, that wasn't like me, but that was you know uh, that that was that was the Larouche organization. That was the Larouche organization. That was, that was, right. organization. Yeah, that was the mean, think tank. That think tank. Yeah, I mean <laughs> that 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 was you know one of our people who did that. You know, and shit was hilarious. That, okay, <laughs> so 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 basically, they were punking her to draw attention to an issue. Was that? Well, I mean, the issue was that, you know. The thing is, like, one of the we just had a conference called, you know, end green fascism. And what we mean by that is, like, we're not trying to argue about the legitimacy of climate change or not. That is a discussion that should be had. It's why is it the case that Western countries and, you know, so-called developed countries have the right to tell underdeveloped countries how to build their economies? Because they say, well, you can't use oil and gas and petroleum because you're going to blow up the world if you do. So you have to stay poor. You have to stay malnourished. You you can't have hospitals. What are you crazy? More people on your stupid country? You're gonna kill the whole world. So here's green energy. Now the problem with green energy is that it doesn't provide the same uh, requirements and the same energy density that you need to actually sustain a population and an economy. And so the point of us doing that was that it, it, we were bringing attention to the fact that it's just hysterical to say that to underdeveloped nations, yeah, your your child has to die of malnutrition for the greater cause of climate change. And that's what we mean by green, green fascism. And that's why we did the thing on AOC. If she really cared, where are the nuclear proposals? Where's the nuclear fusion and fission plan, uh, uh, the nuclear fusion research and the nuclear fission plants? That stuff can be developed. You got molten salt reactors that can be built in like a few weeks in any country in the world. Anyway, they don't mean to rant, but. No, that's okay. I mean, we were going to bring up the baby eating at some point, so I'm glad we, we'll, re, we'll, re, we'll reshuffle the order. We didn't want to miss that. We didn't want to. We didn't want to gloss over that. Yeah. One thing we don't want to do is be accused of coddling the yeah, baby we eaters. We, no. <laughs> or not. We. I. I do have Jonathan Swift back here. But... That, 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 I'm that, glad you got the reference. <laughs> but look, one of the big, um, one of the biggest videos that we did took issue with, you know, a couple other YouTube hosts who use a sort of guilt by association tactic. So okay, you guys mentioned that Tulsi Gabbard has courage on this one issue, therefore. They would rather the people who want to discredit you do so by discrediting Tulsi Gabbard and then discredit you guys by extension. And I think that's just a cowardly chicken shit way to argue. I said, listen, I don't know who these guys are, meaning you. I don't know if they're fucking nuts. I don't care if I agree with them on anything. I don't care if they are a guy in neon hoodie coming down, you know, like you just mentioned <laughs> earlier. It doesn't matter. What matters is the merits of what they're saying in the video. And the merits of what you guys were saying in the video, uh, I thought, was spot on. And so, you know, it, it, it doesn't really matter for purposes of that discussion whether I agree with you guys on really anything else. And there does seem to be just an unwillingness to address people on the merits because it's much easier to put, as Russell says, an ick factor on somebody. Oh, you guys said a nice thing about Tulsi. Tulsi is right wing for X, Y, and Z reason. Therefore, these guys aren't real progressives. Now, 
as far as I know, you guys have not claimed to be progressives or leftists, but I do want to address one thing that you said in the video. You said to AOC, we believed in you, right? I didn't say we, I said I. I don't know. I, if I okay, sorry that. about that. You said, yeah. I believed in you. Now, you voted for Trump twice, is that right? Yeah, I did. And okay. I'll address this right now. No, no, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to shiv you on it. I'm just saying, like... I think people have a difficult time reconciling those two things, because when you said I believed in you, I think a lot of people thought that you were perhaps posing as a sort of disaffected AOC stand right. like Russell is. And that you I think people thought that you sort of misrepresented yourself in that way. So do you want to take the opportunity to sort of clear that yeah. up a little bit? What did you mean by that? Yeah, and actually, I have, um, somebody I respect, Katie Halpert, she brought the same thing up because she thought that Kynan and I were posing as progressives. You're right. I never said I was a progressive leftist, right? Um, I'm not right wing, left wing, this or that, but I did believe in AOC because I'm from the South Bronx, right? I have, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've suffered through like roaches, rats, terrible landlords, okay, public housing, right? I'm from here. This is where I'm from. And at the time, in 2018, when she had yeah. just won her primary, yeah. right, and this is now August, I was dealing with this issue where my apartment was literally collapsing. I lived in a basement apartment, and the ceiling was like, it, it was bubbling up with all this sewage water. And oh, it was man. Down, right? I went to my That, that is, uh, for those of you not from New York, that is some classic New York shit. What he, okay, literally I, what he's describing, literally. I went to my councilman, Fernando Cabrera, okay, and he was good at first. He got HPD there, you know, quickly, rather than the three days they said they'd get there. They got there, like, in a few hours. It was a legal basement? Was it legal? No, it wasn't legal. It was an illegal basement. You, you, know, you know, man, you took a chance. Department of Buildings can tell you to leave right now. I was like, you know, so... I don't know. I, what was I, 20 at the time? I was living with my mother and my grandfather. I still do. Uh, you know, and like my mom at the time didn't speak that much English, right? So I was the one standing up for us. And then the councilman says, well, guess what? Uh, what if it were the case that somebody came to you with like $15,000 and you just don't sue the landlord? I was like, what the? What are you talking about? He said, or how about you just like remodel the apartment and then sublease it and then make like a tiny $50 profit? I, what? Why would I subject someone else to the same conditions that I've been subjected to? So, AOC won her primary at the time. She's talking shit about doing this and that. Yeah, I reached out to her, and yeah, I did believe in her because I thought she was the hope that the Bronx needed. Yeah, she was in my district. You know, that was more Asanya. She's up in, uh, in like, by Pelham and stuff. But you know what? I thought she cared about people. And, you know, I mean, at the time, even when she didn't respond, I still believed in her i was like you know what maybe she's busy campaigning whatever and all these votes that she's done in the congress voting for the iron dome or i guess she cried about it and then voting the fund ice and the police and um israel and now you know nuclear war it's like yeah of course and then just on the trump thing uh you know i came down to the voting of lesser of two evils i mean hillary clinton's a fucking witch excuse my language okay Okay, and then Donald Trump. I didn't know what I was going to get with Donald Trump, but I knew I didn't want what Hillary had. And then Biden, I had already known about the whole Ukrainian Nazi thing. There's photos of him shaking hands with Oleg Tyanovak, who's the founder of the Savota Party in Ukraine. I wasn't going to vote for that fucking guy either. So, I mean, now I have a different philosophy, which is I'm going to vote for the person who I think should be in office, no matter whatever their chance of winning presidency is, whether they're like a no-name nobody who nobody knows is on the ballot, or if it's like the most popular person there. If I think they should be there, that's who I'm going to vote for. Anyway, I'm talking too much. Sorry. No, no, you're fine. I thought that was a, no. a thorough and fair yeah. answer. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I don't know, Kynan, if you ever were a folk progressive or... <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I never claimed to be in that video. I mean, I'm only 20, and I was, what, um, what, 16 when AOC was running? So, I mean, I was never really involved in anything at that time. Um, but, you know, just on this question that you have to be a leftist, quote-unquote, you have to have leftist views to be counted for anything. I don't know if you guys are right. familiar with Ben Norton. Um, he had recently, you know, smeared us um, because, you know, anyone who doesn't have his view on politics doesn't amount to anything. And that's just completely ridiculous, you know. So, yeah, it doesn't matter if you're a leftist, you know, right wing, whatever you identify yourself as, yourself as. If you come out with this view, if you 
care about your family, if you care about your gr children, grandchildren having a future, well, then you should probably stand up and raise your voice against the war. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's that's totally fair. Um, and, you know, one of the one of the main thrusts of our show is that, yes, I mean, we are on the left, but. What leftists need to understand is that the left is losing right now. The, the, the left is eating shit right now. There aren't enough leftists right now to accomplish the kinds of things that they want to. And so what you're going to have to do is broaden the coalition of, and have conversations with people like you guys who maybe don't uh, consider yourselves leftists ideologically. But you know what? 2018, Jose, you're in a spot where AOC comes and starts speaking to your material concerns and you invest in her because of that. Whether yeah. you're on the left or not, whether you're a socialist or not, I mean, who, who gives a shit? Who yeah, gives a shit? The left right now is not in a position to be nitpicky about labels, right? Beggars can't be choosers, the old saying, right? And so the signaling that came from people was that you guys were not a member of our team. Uh, so you don't have to be listened to. I almost forgot the guy's name. Bhaskar Sankara, the found the uh, the head of Jacobin, very very disappointing. He yeah. retweeted AOC's Instagram post that we just said and said, "Good job by AOC calling out the fact that these guys aren't on the left." I'm sorry, man. We've interviewed a bunch of Jacobin writers on our show. I think they've done some really good work. Everybody I've talked to over there has been cool. But what the fuck are you talking about, man? Like yeah. seriously, what the fuck is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? I know you have a magazine that gets good circulation for an indie magazine. That's not winning power. That's not changing the world. Your fucking magazine is not it. You're going to have to open your ears a little bit to people who, like, I, I mean, we've said this a million times right now. Look at what the stakes are here. And these guys are saying the right thing on this issue. Put your concern about Tulsi Gabbard or LaRouche or Trump or everything else. Just take their points on the merits. But people don't want to do that. They do not want to do that. Yeah, no, of course. And I mean, like, um, it's, it's you know, somebody said this, uh, and, and I love saying this, it's like, sorry, you're not cool enough to be anti-nuclear war, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, sorry about that. You well, know? that, that, I mean, that's my experience, unfortunately, with the whole liberal class across the board. If you disagree with them, they go straight to character assassination. And even it doesn't really matter what it is. If you argue with them for long enough, they will, if they have to do a triple somersault into a glass of water to call you an ist or a phobe based on three syllables in a 15,000 word essay, they will do it rather than to engage you on the substance of your argument. No, of course. And I mean, I think the way to just kind of like get around that, other people need to do it. Like, Listen, I like I like the attention, you know, but at the same time, like it's not about me or Kynan and I could also kind of care less about the attention. I want other people and I think Kynan agrees with me here. Other people just need to stand up right now. And I think the reason why we're being we're being dragged through the mud is to kind of show like, hey, we're going to we're going to do the same thing to you if right. you stand up like these idiots here. But you know what I say? I don't care. Just if more people do it, they're not going to scrutinize everybody. They can't scrutinize 200 people standing up. Maybe they can. They could try. Well, uh, I mean, look, I, w I, I would actually challenge you on that. Uh, they did scrutinize everybody who voted for Donald Trump even after he beat them, right? Like, even after they lost, and they'll say Hillary won the popular vote. Okay, fine. Whatever. You know, that and... Eight dollars will get you a popcorn and soda at the movies, right? But like, they lost. They lost a national election to Trump, and their response was to smear everyone who voted for Donald Trump. <laughs> like, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they'll do this on any scale because that's the nature of what they're doing. They are creating it. Look, the Democratic Party is more a social club than it is a political party at this point, right? It's a click. You're either in it's a, it's a, or you're it's out. A, it's a social club. Lose. Their their newsletter is the New York Times. Exactly. Exactly. Win or lose. Win well, or I mean, lose. My response to that is I think there needs to be a third force. I don't necessarily believe in parties per se because you can have independent candidates who are unaffiliated with any party. 
And I think that's what you, I mean, that's what Kynan and I are working on right now with Diane Sayre. I mean, I'm sure you saw my Twitter handle. It says vote Diane Sayre. Sure. She's a, uh, 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 a candidate running for U.S. Senate against Chucky Schumer here in New York, right? And the only reason we put LaRouche candidate on the ballot is because you need to have a name. Otherwise, we would have just ran her independent, right? And now they're not letting her even debate. I don't know if you guys ever done like signature collecting to get candidates on ballots and stuff. I did that for AOC. AOC, right? Yeah. Okay. So for independence in New York, they uh, Cuomo before he left raised the signature requirements for independence. So um, it's fifteen thousand. That that sounds like him. Yeah. Fifteen thousand signatures required to be a statewide candidate, right? Just like Democrat or Republican. But if you're an independent, you need forty-five thousand signatures in six weeks. Okay. So we don't have the same money as the parties do. We don't get the same resources they do, the same connections they do, the same crooked tactics they do. And we got to do three times the work, okay, in a six-week period. And you know what? We did it. We got 66,000 signatures, and we were spot on, okay? Diane should be on the debate, okay, that's happening on, on what is it, October 30th with Spectrum? Is that right, mm-hmm. Kynan? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay? And they don't want her on a debate. And I know people have been complaining all the time about, you know, every every third independent candidate always complains about never being on the major debates but you know what i'm here to stand up for every candidate whether it's my candidate or it's jeff young over in kentucky who's like a cool guy but it's also somebody i like disagree with vehemently on a lot of things he's standing with the nuclear war against against the nuclear war excuse me um there's other candidates right now who are being denied the ability to debate who've met the requirements to be on the ballot and that's you know another reason why i i think that like if you want to be anti-war and anti-nuclear war, getting Diane Sayre on the debate stage would be a big blow to the people like Chuck Schumer, who are the ones facilitating nuclear war right now, because she would just call them out on it. She would just straight up say, listen, you're, none of this matters. You know, policy, economics, you're throwing us into World War Three right now. You know, yeah, I mean, and one thing I just, price. just to, to undergird that point is, is that, you know, I mean, we're not exaggerating here. Like, uh, it was just leaked out that Biden's own team says we're at about 10 to 20 percent chance of nuclear war. And Leon yeah. Panetta said 20 to 25. Yeah. And he's exactly. he's certainly not an anti-establishment firebrand. That 20 guy. to 25. Now, we're New York guys here. Giancarlo Stanton, one of the best hitters in baseball, plays for the New York Yankees. He's one of the best offensive players in baseball. His batting average is 221, which means he gets a base hit 22% of the time. Which means you average a 20 to 25% chance of nuclear war. There's about the same chance of nuclear war now as there is of Giancarlo Stanton getting a base hit when he steps up to the plate. All right. How many people think we're exaggerating now that I put it that way? All right. Yeah, that, that's that's I don't know baseball. Kind of knows baseball. Kind of a Mets. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you think? Oh, well, I'm sorry to tell you. Well, I mean, for you, the world's already ended. So, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, you'll you'll appreciate my pain. Right. The, but one of one of the worst New York experiences for me, I live in Harlem. I had to ride that fucking D train with those Yankee people today. <laughs> oh, yeah. They were, all, they were all on the way uptown to the stadium. That's right. The game's uh, starting at 5 tonight, so it's almost oh on. Oh, my God. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, God. <laughs> fucking oh, hate man. that shit. As soon as uh, I Russell, saw them with the, with the jerseys, I was like, oh, fuck. It's oh, man. Day. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. yeah. Well, do we have anything else, Russell? Do you have anything else for these guys? Uh, yes. Okay. Now, look, we're political junkies. I don't know about Keaton. I really, I I remember seeing the LaRouche guys on my college campus, you know, every now and then. It's been a while, maybe because he died. But I remember the Al Franken bit on SNL. Al Franken used to do a bit. I don't think most people even know what that means. What does that mean? What does it mean to you? You, you You are involved in a LaRouche organization, correct? Yeah, that's not that's not just a something that that's no, brought out. I got exonerate Larouche. Yeah, kind of go ahead. All right. So what does question. that what does that mean to you? Why don't Wait, you go let me first? refer to my handlers first and see. What... <laughs> <laughs> Jose, you should go first. You should go first. And all right, all right. Do, 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 do you have any re- reptilian mean? humanoids there with you? 
If you start speaking in tongues, we're not going to be able to translate it, just so you know. I can't close caption that. I don't know. Uh, I happen to have David Ickes right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what that means to me, well, first of all, I never spoke to Lynn. I think I, well, actually, no, that's not true. I think it was in like 2015. I was on a phone call. It was like a, they do these things, they do these Thursday night calls, right? Where it's like they do a briefing of like the geostrategic situation of the world, right? You know, what's going on? And then there's a QA, right? And in 2014 or 2015, Lynn was on one of these. And then I like asked Lynn, I, this was like when I was first coming around, I was like, how do you know? What do you mean when you say the British? What does it mean to say the British, the British, the British? And the guy just like absolutely smoked me. And I felt like so embarrassed. And I was like, damn, all right, I guess this guy kind of knows what he's talking about. But and I was what, I was like 15 or 16 at the time. But what what it means to me is this, you know, I come from where I come from. I'm in, in New York City as a whole. It's a fucking shithole. It's not just the South Bronx. Right. Um, and I see people who are living in squalor and poverty. And, you know, Khalif Browder went to, to jail wrongly. He should not have been there. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the case of Khalif Browder. I but, am not. I'm not. Okay, basically, like, he's, he's, he's from the Bronx, too. You know, he was accused of stealing a purse or something or a backpack or something, and he went to Rikers Island for three years. And then wow. he was never he was never convicted of anything. Oh, you know, I do. Just, I, did, I, 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 this, it now. rings a bell now that you're And then after it. he comes out, he's proven innocent, right? Right, okay. right, right. There's a whole documentary on him. He kills himself, okay, right. after coming out of right. Rikers Island, right? Why? What the fuck was that about, okay, that he felt that coming out of prison, he had no hope, okay, he, he was just disillusioned with, with life and reality. You know why? Because honestly, the conditions of the country are deteriorating to a point where there is no hope for anything or anyone. And so being a part of this movement tells me that to be human, there is a dignity to it, that there is a beauty to it, there is there is a meaning to life and so the one of the ways that that has materialized itself is through this program that i promote called the space ccc back in the 1930s roosevelt had this idea of a civilian uh conservation corps you need to modernize that right now because all these young people who are running around who are into whatever the hell they're into need somewhere to go where they can become engineers construction workers maybe even emergency nurses to deal with the fact that we have a health system that couldn't deal with a pandemic you need people to then take the skills they learn in the ccc go back to their neighborhood build up the hospitals they need build up the schools they need build the infrastructure and housing that is needed and you pay them as they're getting this training you pay them and their family because it's a federal program and it's investment on them and you require them for two years after the program to work for you the government so that they can go around the country building the infrastructure that's needed and you got to base it here in the Bronx and you will revolutionize the country in about two to four years because then you will see maglev trains appear out of nowhere you will see hospital be built when they when they were shutting them down you will see housing be built so nobody will be homeless anymore and you will have a, a, a renaissance of new generations of young people coming out with hope who are happy to wake up and say damn man i'm glad i can use my mind and my skills okay to serve not me, not my neighbors, but to the people who will be born 50 years after I'm dead, 5,000 years. How many babies will be born in a hospital this guy constructed, okay, long after he's dead? And how many of those babies will be educated in a school he built long after he's dead? So, you know, the meaning of life no longer has any meaning in the present, but only in posterity. And that's what the hell this country was founded on, for posterity. And that's what, I, that's what being a part of this movement means to me that I can make life better for people who come after me. Can I add to that? Okay. I'd like to. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, like I said, I was when I first started coming around the LaRouche movement, I had never been politically involved in anything. I didn't know anything about it. But my background, they were actually doing a summer program in New York City, and it was focused on culture. They had We were singing in a chorus, and it was also on science. So that's how they recruited. That's, you know, how I was recruited. And, you know, their emphasis was always, you know, human beings are inherently creative. You have to bring that potential out by getting them to discover ideas in geometry, um, 
in science. We worked on, you know, figures like Johannes Kepler. You know, we're always taught that, you know, the sun is at the center of the solar system. But then we really don't get a chance, I think, to actually discover why that is, to discover the causes. And I had done a lot of work in that. And that's what gravitated me towards them. You know, it's, you know, it seems irrelevant. But you know, what are their actual policies? What are we fighting for? And I'll give you one example, um, which is what Helga, Lynn's wife, you know, Lynn passed away about three years ago, but Helga's continuing her, his life mission and work. And she's focused on saying that, listen, if you want to stop this war drive, you know, we need to actually build a new security architecture for the entire world. You know, all nations be, need to be put on an equal footing. You know, that doesn't mean that the United States, they're the greatest power of the world, that Britain's the greatest power. No, we need to focus on Africa. We need to focus on South America. We need to focus on their development, you know. And Lynn always focused his life on that. He traveled extensively throughout the world and built concrete programs on how to develop these countries, you know. And that's what we need to do today. Why are we fighting one another when we can focus our resources on actually eliminating poverty, on building modern healthcare systems in the world, you know, on giving people economic development? And I think you see that's what a lot of nations are actually gravitating towards, you know? They don't want to be on the side of the West. You know, they don't want to support these sanctions, which are now destroying their means to live. So that's what we got to focus on, you know? The name, the new name for peace is economic development, as Helga constantly says. And that's what gravitated me towards this movement. I think it's the right idea. I, I wasn't around for the smears, you know, whatever they may say about Lynn. But that's what I see. I agree with it. And that's why I continue to be with this movement. So what, what what's fascinating to me about both of those answers is that there's a lot of what you guys just said that if it weren't attached to a brand, i.e. Right. the LaRouche right. brand, so many leftists and socialists and AOC types would find common ground with you. But we never get to that point in the conversation because cowards like this just want to put a one-off smear out there, oh, they're Trumpers. Therefore, it doesn't matter. Nothing they have to say matters, right? You can't they're, get they're to a point cultists. in the con right. You can't get to a point in the conversation where we just got if you just shut someone out right away. And that's what AOC is doing. It's what so much of the left is doing now. It's what the Democratic Party has done for decades, really. Uh, but since Trump, that's gone into overdrive, and now AOC is parroting that 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 same line here. And there's just not a willingness to engage. So many people, I mean, I don't want to get into a tangent about Joe Rogan, but people assume Joe Rogan is like an Alex Jones type, right? They just assume that when, you know, without ever hearing Joe Rogan, they just hear about certain ideas of his, and they're shocked that when they listen to him, he's just like mild-mannered, nice, kind of quiet guy, because there's just not a willingness to engage. There's not a curiosity there. And so... We're not going to litigate the uh, details of what it means to be a LaRoucher. Uh, we don't have time. And frankly, I don't have the interest in it. Um, I didn't think it was really relevant to the points that you guys were making at that town hall. Now that we sort of prodded you a little bit, like I said, um, in no way are we ready to make an endorsement of the LaRouche movement. But that's not the point. The point is you hear somebody out. Hear somebody out, give them a chance to explain themselves, and they'll say things that are perhaps surprising, perhaps enlightening. And that's how you forge coalitions, or at the very least have conversations where there is the potential to do that. There's no potential to do that when you do what AOC does. Well, he voted for Trump twice, therefore, you know, who cares? He's not anti-war. That's just that's just ridiculous. That's just well, and I, actually, I, I made when we did the video on it. That's what I said. There's really no contradiction between somebody supporting the AOC we thought we were getting and voting for Donald Trump twice in light of the alternatives. Like if, if anti-war is really your thing, that's a completely consistent position. Which it obviously was, because you're claiming that one of the main reasons why you voted for Trump in 2020 was because of Biden's ties to these elements in Ukraine that you thought could get us into a situation that we are in now. 
Yeah, Kynan and I made a video about it actually in November of 2020 talking about, listen, these are the the ties that Biden has to Ukraine. And it wasn't just like the whole Hunter Biden thing. It wasn't that. It was, I mean, we touched on it a little bit, but it was the fact that he's shaking hands with the guy who started one of the racist parties in Ukraine, the Savota political party, and it's offshoot the C-14 youth group. Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, I don't, I don't really have anything other to say, other than L. Keaton. You know, you say you're not going to endorse us, but watch, you're going to be singing Bach and Beethoven real soon. You'll be reciting Shakespeare and, and, and poetry. You're going to be reading, you know, So You Wish to Learn Economics by Lynn Watch. All right. Well, um, yeah, Keaton, I just want to. I don't get those references, but I don't, I don't see what they have to. But, uh, you know, we'll see. You will, though. You will get them. That's my that's my point. All right. Well, if I wake up in the middle of the night acting strange, uh, I'll, uh, I'll send you a DM. Say, what the hell did you do to me? <laughs> Keaton, um, I just want to fully endorse what you said about actually talking to people that you really don't know about and getting to know what their views are. I think everyone should be doing that now because, you know, as Jose touched upon with this issue with elections in New York, how they're increasing the signature requirement, how they're not allowing candidates to be on the debate. There is no democracy anymore. There is no more discourse in the country. And that's exactly what we need today. And I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys taking the time. That's all we got, Russell, right? Uh. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very interesting because this is a point people often make about the LaRouche movement, that you can't pin it down ideologically, you know, in keeping with what we were saying. I, th I think a lot of this fighting, honestly, I always think of Marshall McLuhan, the medium is the message. Yeah. Um, social media, the message is fighting. That's the message because that's what the algorithm does. The algorithm, it's uh, in theory, social media and the Internet opened up the world to people and no longer are you getting your information from one source. In practice, because of the way the algorithms work, it actually put people more in a bubble than ever before. Because when there was one source, they kind of had to try to speak to everybody. But now they can a la carte information to each literally individual person. And I think that's a big part of why people are not willing to speak to each other anymore, because their their brains are constantly pickled in opinions that they that that appeal to their lizard brain. And that's it. And you're the enemy. And then they they just don't want to talk to you at that point. Not hey, that the you know, what's you know, what's funny about the lizard brain thing. I know that's like referenced a lot in like, you know, uh, uh, the anthropology and the evolution of man. David Icke was real big on that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's what we call in the business a, a, a callback. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we came full circle. But yeah, that, that's all. That's what I was thinking of when we were talking about how nobody wants to talk to anybody anymore. I think in in some respects, you can't really blame people, man. They're they're they've been no they've been brain damaged by technology of communication of this era. The the I, I have said it many times on the show. Yes, man, we wouldn't have this show if it wasn't for the Internet. But the Internet is a net, lo net loss for humanity. What it has done to people intellectually, um, psychologically, spiritually, has it, the juice has not been worth the squeeze. In, in the end, it's hurt us more than it's helped us, I think. And he's old enough to know. I'm I, am. Guys. <laughs> I am. Yeah. yeah. Well. This was fun, guys. Thanks for having me on. Oh, absolutely. It was great to meet you guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for coming on, guys. Please clap. <laughs>